All right, all good. Well, thank everyone. Thank you, everyone, for attending or uh, registering for the uh, PMO three six five uh, webinar specifically for the Victorian government. Um, so we'll talk about the specific about the uh, project management guidelines, policies, and frameworks that are, uh, I guess, recommended by big government and implemented in uh, few of our clients actually in the in the in the sector. Uh, but I wouldn't mind just uh, starting with a generic uh, demonstrate or generic presentation of uh, what PMO365 uh, is all about. Um, if you have any uh, questions or you have anything that you would like to uh, see through the webinar itself, please let me know. Uh, the webinar is scheduled for an hour, um, uh, probably would uh, need uh, at least half an hour, 45 minutes to actually go through the presentation and the demo. But then we'll open up for a kind of an interactive Q&A. Uh, if uh, any of the attendees would like to see specific areas that uh, were not demonstrated and so on. Right. So um, uh, the first thing that I would like to share with everyone, which is, I guess, something that we all know, uh, most of us know, who work in the project delivery, project management or portfolio management competencies across uh, the organization that we represent. Um, is that the role of the PMO as a function is definitely changing. And now that's what, that was before COVID-19, obviously, because of the digital transformation and artificial intelligence uh, um, uh, kind of taking hold and all of the digitization of things. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I, will, I will explain why it is related. But it's definitely, I mean, it's very early stages really with COVID-19, but the, the, in theory, this should uh, accelerate that change of the PMO role uh, because, uh, you know, I guess the prediction is the, the transformation will be accelerated, uh, given people would be re working remotely and so on. Um, so a more reliant on, uh, I guess, tools and applications uh, uh, in the digital kind of space. Uh, so we, when we look at the uh, PMO mandate for most of our clients in the big government, to be honest, big New South Wales, uh, uh, Queensland government, they're quite similar. Uh, and when it goes to smaller states, it, 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 the, the, uh, there will be a bit of variations for the mandates for PMOs. Uh, but in the kind of big states, even in Canberra, to be honest, uh, these are the, the, the main mandates as we see them from our experience. And we've been doing this for almost 12 years now. Um, so really the pillars of the, P, uh, of the PMO mandates are two main things. Um, what we call do projects right, and then do the right projects. Uh, so basically why people set up PMOs uh, or invest in PMOs, they mandate the PMOs to ensure that the projects are done right and that the right projects are been selected in the first place. Now, under each of these pillars, uh, you would see that there are um, a kind of a more detailed business requirements for the establishment and investment in PMO. Uh, the very top one is visibility on uh, project information or program information. And again, that's been uh, be very blunt. The um, the the uh, you know one of the main reasons, or the where obviously for most of the PMOs that we talk to, not saying that your PMO or your organization's PMO mandate is purely this, uh, but the reporting on project information and program information preparing those, those facts to work different working groups and steering committees about a certain portfolio, a selection of projects, to give those working groups, committees, execs, uh, the visibility they require in order to control uh, the, their investments in these projects, uh, obviously, um, is being given to the PMO. So a PMO, usually what they do is they go and, you know, various type of Excel sheets, talk to project managers, officers, coordinators, whatever you want to call the role, um, try to collect data from different places and present a monthly, fortnightly, quarterly portfolio status report. It's a very kind of popular type of report, uh, is the portfolio status report, and put it in front of those uh, uh, people who want to see them to discuss and do make decisions and so on. So really, this is one of the main uh, objectives or elements for uh, setting up a PMO. Uh, uh, and then in, in, in the in the um, in the government sector. Uh, now the other one is demand on resources. That this is basically, if you like, secondary or compared to the visibility. Um, you know, how do we 
manage the demand on different resources within the organization, given we have finite uh, number of people and resources. Some PMOs have been tasked to look after this, some not. Some you know, uh, business units would manage their own resources internally within the business unit. Some do want the PMO to get involved. So again, this is a, not a very uh, consistent demand or consistent mandate across the PMOs. The third one is more kind of, uh, I guess, popular in terms of the mandate for PMOs is the consistency of the way that the project are delivered, i.e., um, you know, project managers will deliver the projects following a certain process, a framework, call a framework, a methodology, whatever you want to call it. Um, not for the sake of bureaucracy that uh, we need to make sure that, you know, these forms are filled out and those, you know, lines been uh, crossed and so on. And these are these these uh, signatures were obtained. Um, you know, that, but to be frank, some PMOs do do, do it for the sake of it. Um, but the reason why uh, the business would invest in such processes is you know, for project assurance that you know uh, you 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 have certain gates to make sure that the money is not wasted, the the effort is not uh, put onto um, uh, things that are uh, not going to deliver the outputs, the outcomes uh, desired. Uh, that that the project is delivered on time. You know you have checks and balances, obviously. So you plan it, you get a you know a gateway, you. you or, or you initiate a project, you get a gateway, you plan it, get a gateway, you execute it in different phases, and you get gateways in between those different phases, just to make sure that the projects are basically delivered in the right way, within a scope, within budget, uh, and within time. Uh, so again, without having a consistent consistent way of, of following a certain process, not not static, not not one way of doing things, could be multiple ways of doing things. You know, it depends on the project size or type or location. Uh, but at least, but it's consistent. So every major capital works project, for example, will go through this process, while every uh, school IT enhancement will go this way. Um, as long as it's consistent, so the organisation can have that control over the projects and again make sure that they're uh, delivering the uh, desired output outcomes uh, within the uh, um, kind of given constraints such as uh, budgets and resources. So that's the do projects right to do the right projects i'm not going to go through the details of you know how is this broken into bits and pieces but it's really the concept of how do we go about prioritizing uh the initiatives and the projects uh not only just prioritizing them in terms of how valuable they are to the organization uh, but also how do we optimally select initiative in a, in a given period of time so let's say in the very famous popular one when it comes to Kind of capital works type of projects, not all, not um, uh, even IT. Some in some cases, um, uh, IT projects. Um, the annual planning. So for a year, uh, we have a obviously a mixed bag of maybe projects that were carried over from the previous financial year, but obviously initiatives that were that are sitting in the pipeline waiting to be executed, um, and the new initiatives uh, that come throughout the year itself. So how do you go optimally select between investment in uh, projects that are going to, you know, upgrade the business digital uh, systems, or if they the 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 business on assets, you know, upgrade the assets, or invest in, you know, I don't know, upgrading marketing if it's something that needs to be done, or whatever the business is is, is areas that need investment. How do we go about investing in the optimal way? Now, obviously, that doesn't Talk about projects that are delivered for the uh, kind of the for the sake of revenue, i.e., making money. Uh, if you are, and 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 that would be a bit um, uh, unusual for a government entity, uh, manage projects that are uh, uh, that generate uh, direct revenue to your business. This is more commercial type of project management. It's a different way of of doing this. It's ROIs and um, and other many other things. So. I'm not going to talk about that because we're talking about the big government uh, way of, or not why, but uh, requirements or any government in this case. So this is these are the mandates, and 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 if you go on about uh, how do PMOs achieve those mandates, given that they've got the investment and the funding required by the business, they basically need to look at three things. They look at processes uh, that are within the organisation. 
you know, introduce new ones, uh, change existing ones, or completely remove existing ones. Depends on uh, how they look at it in order to, again, achieve the do project cards and do the right project. But also the people themselves, are they hiring them, are they acquiring new resources or skilling up resources or mentoring resources and monitoring them as well to perform the activities, tasks and uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 responsibilities given to them. But increasingly technology, and this is again, you know, this is how we get into the PMO 365 and, and a, a new age of digitization and how we see that it's going to be accelerated, even COVID-19 and all the, you know, uh, economical and other types of, uh, uh, I guess, changes that are happening around us. Um, so the challenge with technology uh, that, you know, we've seen the last, you know, we've been doing this as, a, as, as I said, 12 years, um, is not the functions within the technology of project portfolio management. They are mostly deliver the same thing. You know, it's an ability to manage risks, an ability to have a workflow to govern the project from one stage to the other, uh, maintain a schedule, do cost estimation, you know, the standard stuff when it comes to project management and portfolio, then, then rolling up into one location to have visibility of all projects. That kind of the basic requirements for a PPM solution or what I call a project portfolio management solution um, is quite similar. But especially in government, uh, you, the challenge is not the actual function of the PPM solution, it's the data sources. Um, so you'd have a kind of a neural system like this, where an organization might, might have individual files, or you know, Excel, Project, P6, um, uh, Word documents, PowerPoint, you name it, for different pieces of information. You might have risks, Excel sheets, um, contractors, uh, that we deal with, you know, listed in another Excel sheet, concepts of I or ideas that people collecting in certain business units in another, another Excel, uh, maintenance of plans for assets in Microsoft projects, and so on. Uh, JIRA might be used for IT projects, uh, and then the financials or the asset details might be sitting in Technology One, Oracle, SAP, and other ERPs, big ERPs, plus your emails and your kind of messaging and well, meetings these days going to be you know virtual meetings make it even harder um, and so on so that's the problem that the sources of information are so scattered in the organization and in a very complex neural system and it is naive to assume that well that is just you know the organization did not do their uh, architecture review and got their you know systems in integrated in a nice way because it will not uh, we now have, we now recognize, not us as individuals, but I guess, um, you know, as, as, as professionals within the industry, um, we are recognizing that this will not change. Uh, this is uh, going to stay. In fact, it's going to be more complex and more, uh, the neural system will get even more uh, um, uh, yeah, complex, but bigger and wider in, in the organization. Um, new technologies will always come in, artificial intelligence will come in, it's going to be more and more digital uh, footprint the organization would have, therefore the data, the information will be buried in a numerous locations. Um, so the, the traditional, traditional solution for this problem, uh, organizations go, okay, well, easy, uh, we'll introduce a PPM tool, a project portfolio management tool. And then we go, and I go back to my neural system here, and I will ask the project managers, the subject matter experts, the account managers, the architects, the team members who are working on tasks, whatever the uh, user profile might be, to replace their tools. You know, stop using Microsoft Projects, stop using P6, stop using Excel, use my PPM tool. Just because I want that top-down visibility and control. Not because it's better for them as individuals. So. Uh, the person who's is currently using Excel, Smart Sheets, Word, PowerPoint, whatever the uh, tool of choice might be, Jira, uh, ServiceNow, whatever, uh, we go and say, no, nope, you have to stop using it if you're managing a project or you're involved in a project, use my PPM tool. And obviously the reason is obvious, uh, is, is, is straightforward, a top-down visibility and control, which is not unfair. Our organization do need that visibility and control, but the strategy here is a problem. It's wrong. 
what happens is that those PPM tools that are introduced, whether it's Microsoft, Clarizin, Tech, you know, uh, uh, CA technology, Pro, even Microsoft Project Online, you name it. Um, Service now have their own PPM solution. There's something called Plan of View. There's numerous number of project portfolio management solutions. What they what they end up what end, end up happening is that they just become a reporting solution, not really a project portfolio management solution. It's just a place where the project managers go and put data into them every month, every fortnight, every week, and then that be, and and they go back to their managing tools of project and Word and Excel and you know. Uh, with 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 all fairness, that's something that they should do because they are not tasked to give visibility to the organization. They are tasked to manage projects, to execute tasks, to uh, you know perform tasks within project, whatever the case might be. Uh, so they have to use um, the tools that works for them. So what happens is that the tool again, as I said, becomes a, a reporting tool, not project portfolio management tools. There's a gap between the two. And therefore, you the, the, you get you lose that accurate real-time uh, visibility and control. What what is actually happening out there is not what you have in your report. It's dated. It's uh, not accurate. It doesn't cover everything, and you're back to square one. So how PMO 365 differs is uh, is, is literally um, in, in represented in this specific, specific uh, uh, um, slide. It is the uh, implementation of three tactics. Uh, we call them introduce, replace, and integrate. So the first one is uh, introduce is obviously you would need you would definitely need a PPM tool. I mean, it, it is quite uh, you know for medium and large organizations to think that a PPM tool is a luxury. I think is very very basic. Uh, if you really want to execute strategy, we're not talking about oh it's a nice to have report on the portfolio. Strategies are executed by change. Change is driven by projects. That's that's given. You know you can't. You can't uh, uh, get away from that. Uh, therefore, a PPM tool is a very important tool. It's not a. Uh, it's nice to have. Um, so a PPM tool is definitely required. But in to, to use PPM 365 as a tool, but you implement the 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 the, the two tactics that I have. Uh, I'm displaying here. The replace, which is the traditional way, um, uh, and that's fine. In some cases, it will apply. So, for example, if we and I use let's use um, uh, issues management as as a as a, an example. If we feel that the current um, Excel sheet that are used by a certain group, it doesn't have to be by the way the same tactic applied to all groups, all business units in the organization. Let's say uh, we have two groups: Group A represent people who work in IT projects, Group B represent people who work in capital works projects. Um, and the Group A, which works on IT, use Jira. Uh, uh, for their uh, issues management. Uh, and then Group B, the Capital Works, use Excel. And that Excel that Capital Works uses, um, not working for them, it's clunky, collaboration is limited. So what we're going to go, well, in this case, let's replace it. You know, don't use Excel sheet anymore. Use what we have in the PPM tool as an issues management application. And there's a number of variations of it. So let's just assume that as a module, therefore, uh, issues management, that will uh, 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 work well, that will replace the Capital Works Issues Management Excel sheets quite nicely, and we sell it to them and they are convinced that, yeah, this is actually a better, better tool, I'm gonna adopt it. So they adopt it, tick in the box. So this is where we apply their place tactic. But more importantly, the integrate tactic is very important. This is how PMO 365 differs. Not integration with big um, uh, enterprise applications like ERP only, but not integration with SAP and Oracle to bring the project accounting and the financials. That's given. That's that's almost uh, a, a, a mandatory requirement. But we're talking about integration to the smallest nodes in the organization, the Excel files and the JIRAs and the uh, project files and the P6 files, the individual nodes, not just enterprise application to enterprise application. And not only at the beginning, at the setup of the PPM tool, all the time. So a new Excel sheet comes in place. Some project manager use an Excel sheet for doing something. Integrate with this as a part of the monthly service, not as a setup thing. We'll set up, forget. That neural system will change. It is continually changing. Therefore, that integration is not a setup exercise. Well, obviously, it will be part of the setup. 
but also it's an ongoing service that the PMOs and those organizations need to be responsible, accountable for, to make sure that all of these nodes in the neural system are, we are connected to all the time. I mean, that's using their people and process uh, uh, kind of uh, skills. The technology is something that, you know, people like us would take care of. But it's so easy these days to integrate with, with these nodes. Uh, it doesn't take, you know, weeks, even days, it's, you know, a couple of hours, even less, and you have the integration happening. And I'm talking, and I'll show you today why I'm claiming that. So that's how it differs, that PMO365 is not a PPM uh, tool that is set up and forget. Uh, yes, uh, got a question from Claire. Are we going to learn how it, it integrates? Yes, absolutely. I'll show you how it integrates uh, uh, as part of the demo. Um, so I'll leave it to that. Uh, but again, uh, emphasis on the fact that integration is of, uh, uh, of everything, not only enterprise applications, and it's all the time. Therefore, don't think of integration as a setup exercise. It is a service. It's evolved from being a setup, a one-off, into a service. Right. Therefore, PMO365 as a, a solution, not a technical application, will be a one-stop shop, a one source of truth. That integration, well, the replace, the introduction, the introduce, the replace, and the, uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the introduce, the replace, and integrate tactics will be deployed in order to create a one-stop shop, one source of truth. Uh, you do not have to go anywhere else. You'll have visibility on accurate information and that covers all the nodes in your organization. But, uh, and I call this top-down meeting bottom-up. So top-down uh, organization have that visibility and control that they need. That's the top-down, right? From the top, we need visibility and control. Uh, the problem usually happens when the bottom-up fails that your users do not adopt your tool. So with PMO365 service as part of the technology, ongoing service, and even commercially, it's offered as a service. There is no setup fee. It's a monthly service with the IP of the solution given on day one. You start paying monthly fee. There is no setup fee. There is no PNM hours, none of that. It's a monthly fee. It depends on the number of the project managers. Fixed monthly fee. You know exactly how much I pay because it's a service. So PMO365 as a service, obviously it's a technology service, um, give that top-down organization and, and visibility and control, but make sure the bottom-up is always, the data is flowing from the bottom into that uh, uh, kind of high or, or the top uh, part of the organization by empowering the project managers to work the way they want. We're not going to go and dictate, you know, lose your Microsoft project file, use your X, do not use your Excel, do not use your um, uh, Jira, your service now, your you know, your smart sheets, whatever the case might be. Uh, so that is the key to the offering. Therefore, we can guarantee there's a one-stop shop. One -stop. Otherwise, we can't. Right. Now, what is it made of? It is made of Microsoft 365 Cloud, your Microsoft 365 Cloud. So we don't go to clients and say, now we will host it for you. This solution called PMO 365 will be deployed to the clients on PMO, uh, sorry, 365 Cloud, Microsoft 365 Cloud. I'll talk about the software in the 365 Cloud that will be utilized, but also ready to go packages, including the micro, uh, the, the big government uh, project management framework um, that we've developed again through, well, combination of two ba basically sources. A, looking at the, and I was looking at it actually before we started the, 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 the demo because I can't remember uh, now, either the recommendation by the actual government itself, like the state government project management guidelines, or I think I think there's a, the the Victorian Government Commission. Um, I can't remember the entity name to be very honest, but they've written a very comprehensive project management guidelines with project tiering and gates that is recommended for uh, the uh, different agencies, departments, or other entities within big big government. Um, one of our implementation of that framework and uh, and one of the entities that adopted that framework is, for example, a um, number of, of of departments and, and agencies, but the latest one uh, that we, we are, uh, we've, we've dealt with uh, to get off, literally off that recommendation is uh, called the uh, or Services Victoria, sorry. Um, so that agency literally took that uh, the framework that we uh, picked from the, that 
the, the current government and uh, it's ready to go in the software. It's not ready to go on paper. It's ready to go with all the templates, with all the processes, with all the gates. Uh, obviously, they made variations and a bit of changes, uh, personalized it a bit, but they adopted as it is. And I'll show you that framework in a second. Um, and obviously, our optimization and, and management services. So uh, the package, or the package of the framework, of the which includes reports and forms, as I said, and so on, that we've developed. Uh, your cloud, that's the solution effectively, that's the technical solution. Um, and the old Microsoft Risk Cloud Cloud, using a number of software that you might already own. And our support, training, monitoring, and ongoing integration and configuration and customization services, all uh, 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 combined in a single fixed monthly fee with no set of costs. You, you, you just start on month one, you start paying the monthly fee. You like it for a month, you keep on paying it for the second month. You don't like it, you switch off on the second month. Um, so that's the offering. Now, talking about the software that might be might be utilized in, in, in a PMO365 solution. So the solution itself is available in two architectures. Either you can deploy it to your SharePoint farm or Power Platform farm. So our recommendation is to, to, to deploy it to your Power Platform. By the way, all of these, sub, these software uh, and applications are available in Microsoft 365 Cloud. It's hopefully hosted. It is approved by the government. The likelihood that you have a tenant already is quite high. Um, so again, you're not going through the process to, you know, um, introduce a new data center or classification security. It is your account, it is your user account, using your own uh, a platform that is managed by your own IT people. You're not going somewhere else. Um, so utilizing these these uh, applications or subscription, if you'd like, from in the Microsoft 365 Cloud. As I said, they are available in two platforms. The SharePoint, if you prefer, Power Platform is our recommendation. Um, and I'll talk about them quickly when I do the demo. Um, you might or might not you want to use projects. And again, uh, this is depends on whether you want to integrate, replace, or um, introduce. Uh, and Project Now, Microsoft Project, is actually available in three versions. Um, desktop, online, and something called Project for the Web. Uh, again, if you're interested, I'm more than happy to show you the three versions. But also your existing Microsoft uh, Office 365. I mean, Teams is, 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 and I can show you today how we can collaborate around, around projects within Teams, for example, uh, or Planner, uh, kind of a Kanban board type of task management or work management application, excuse me, application. Obviously your Excel, your Outlook, your To-Do, are uh, also included. If you manage Agile projects, you might want to use Azure DevOps um, um, or Jira or other applications up to you uh, and the data connectors that I talked to. This is where the integration happens and I'm gonna demonstrate this today. So um, having said all of that, the main application that you would have to have, you, you need a must for PMO365 solution is as I said, either SharePoint or uh, Power Platform. You choose one of those. All the rest are optional. Um, everything else I mentioned are optional, but it's available as a solution in either SharePoint or Power Platform. So you might get into this is a this is if you the a case if you're using the Power Platform architecture. This is just an example of a landscape. This is not a, uh, a technical a slide by any means. Um, the one-stop shop will be what we call the common data service. It's a place where all the data, this, this is where we say a single source of truth. This is the single source of truth. Literally, this is the component that represents it. So uh, if you think of this, the blue bit here is where you apply the, um, the two tactics of introduce or replace. So let's say one of the applications using what's so-called Power Apps is an issues management application, right? just as an example. Uh, if you if someone is using this uh, and they didn't have one before, then uh, that's an introduced tactic. If uh, they use an issues management and they replace it, that's a replace tactic. But they can use their own Excel sheet for issues management and will integrate it to the common data service, and that's an integrate tactic, obviously. Or as I said, may, they might use Jira. And we integrate it into the common data service real time. No, you know, no Mickey Mouse. This is actual integration as part of the service. 
Therefore, this is always a real-time accurate representation. Then on this, you can apply your automation of workflows, your governance, uh, and obviously your report and dashboard using Power BI. But you can apply any other project management, program management, portfolio management, concepts, risks management, schedule and time management milestones, cost management and project accounting, contract management, procurement, you name it. Whatever component or a part of a project portfolio management competency that you can think of, um, you can then either integrate, introduce, or replace. So look, I'm going to stop there. This is basically talking about what's included in the solution, apps, workflows, reports. Uh, but before I get started with them, I would like to show you what we call the waterfall. Uh, for, specifically, this is one is for big government uh, framework. Uh, this is a, a bit, um, if you'd like, uh, simplified, just to um, make it, um, uh, I guess, easy to digest. But it's a three-tiered project, a three-tiered um, project management framework. In fact, the one that we started with the kind of the academic, academic one, if you would like, was a five-tiered uh, pro, uh, project management framework. We kind of uh, the implementation that we've seen uh, uh, successfully adopted three, um, but you can go five if you want to. Uh, it goes pipeline initiative, portfolio optimization, then you plan, deliver, and close, and you do benefits for, uh, management. So again. This is out of the box available for uh, the, 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 the uh, Victorian government and uh, 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 entities right away. Uh, obviously, part of the service is customizing it to whatever you want, out in form, removing forms, changing purpose, changing gates, introducing phases and gates and so on, uh, 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 all the way to whatever you want it to be. So that's it in terms of conduction. I'll probably start the demo now. Um, so I'll, I will use I will introduce you the board architectures the uh, the 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 SharePoint architecture but also the uh, Power Platform architecture quickly just to show you the differences and then I will uh, show you the 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 reports and dashboards available and then we'll, at the end we'll talk about integration. So um, this is bottom up. So think bottom up. This thing think project managers. Um, uh, project uh, 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 business analysts, uh, even people who are just managing tasks uh, and interacting to perform a task or in, uh, execute a uh, an, an issue mitigation or risk mitigation plan, or whatever the case might be. So think bottom up. This think operating tools. Don't think reporting tools here. All right. So as a project manager, this is I need to demonstrate to you. It's a one-stop shop. Whether it's an introduce, replace, or integrate. Right. So let's go to the list of projects. Uh, I go all projects, and again, depends on who's uh, signed into the tool. Uh, there's a username, there's a security model behind it. So all of this is stuff are uh, kind of a uh, out of the box functionality. Um, you will only see and be able to do the things that uh, you want to uh, that that you, you have the permission uh, to do and see. Uh, all the what you see here. I'm not know if you've seen Project Online before. You will see that uh, all uh, all line items here are. Um, uh, uh, each line item here, sorry, is a project grouped by the phase. This is these are the initiation, the project and the initiation phase. These are the project and the planning phase. These are the project and the execution phase, and these are the project and project and the closure phase. Um, now, if you want to, there's a, you know, as you can see, some metadata around it and some key performance indicators. Uh, for example, you know, the percentage of completion, the status of the project, if there are any risk issues. <coughs> Excuse me. Or a schedule attached to it. When we're supposed to start and finish? Who's the project manager? What's the schedule status? And so on. Now, to create a project, you go new, and again, using that multi-tiered um, uh, framework that I talked about, you can choose your project type or size. In fact, there is an area before this. It's called the concept uh, phase, which I'm not going to demo. But if you're interested, we might uh, utilize the remaining time to demo it. Uh, to enable the people to calculate the size of their project rather than select the type of their project. So uh, if someone wants to put a project in and go, well, I don't know what the size of it, they go through a concept phase and that phase will help them uh, identify the size of the project. But let's say that that, that, um, that I'm going to come here and literally I'm going to go uh, I'm create a T1 project. So this could be done by a PMO, a BA, or even the business themselves creating a project directly and saying, look, I have an idea. But Again, the triaging of the idea is something 
uh, that is done in a concept that which is I'm not uh, I'm not demoing today. Today is about how we fill the gap between top down and bottom up. So the, the government uh, demo uh, was today, 16th of April. Uh, and I can look, I can enter other details like, you know, um, who's the online manager sponsor program or portfolio, but I'm just going to click finish. So what this will do is basically will bring all the project um, uh, templates, the workflows, um, uh, you know, the, the artifacts using the three tactics that we talked about. Uh, a replace or an integrate um, or introduce tactic. So right away, you'll see that uh, the, the, the page here is showing me that this project is in what's so-called initiation. Uh, as the project progress, by the way, the image will be updated uh, and you'll see the project moving to the planning or the execution phases. Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tool itself is showing me what's required in this phase. You know, you need a business case before you move to the next phase. Uh, in the business case, you require these things. And this is where we, as I said, apply the three tactics. You need a high level schedule, you need a generic research plan, you need a cost breakdown, you need a strategic impact assessment, you need a set of risks and a set of benefits. That will be in a business case that needs to be approved by this person, which is your line manager, then it goes to this group, which is the CMO in my case, and then we'll move to your next stage of project management plan. So all into one stop shop. Now those things are available within the tool by with links now each link will take me either to an application available within the system i.e use the introduce slash replace tactic or it will it will integrate with a, a, an artifact managed outside the system but i still can see it here let me repeat this so for example a high level schedule i can either click on high level schedule and use the app within the system to develop my high level schedule or use Microsoft Project. Same thing with benefits. I can either click on benefits here or use Excel. We will see that they have, here I have issues registers. Either use the app in the tool or use Jira, integrate. And again, it doesn't have to be the one, one tactic implemented across the organization. You can go, IT will use Jira, but these guys will use this, these guys will use the application within the tool. So let me go and <clears throat> Uh, uh, show you those different parts and then the ability to generate the business case from the tool itself. I don't have to go and fill in a form and so on. It is there. I press a button, it will generate a business case form. So obviously these are the links, not only just what we have here in the visual in the in the in the diagram, but also other links to other parts of the information. So business case part A. Uh, this is where you give me the opportunity of the problem, you give me the scope, uh, and so on. Uh, you give me solution summary. Obviously, I'll leave this. Uh, it's a rich text format, by the way. You can insert pictures, tables, do whatever you want to do with it. And there will be a business case part B. Um, but also, I'm going to go and click on the high level schedule. So let me um, demonstrate the two different tactics. If we're using <clears throat> introduce or replace, i.e., if you are not going to integrate with a an existing application that the users are using, I'll just come here and maintain my schedule. So this is why I go look, um, I don't know, create a new task. Uh, let's go create a new task just quickly. New task, give it a start and you know finish date. Uh, by the way, as you can see, start with a template. Uh, I can update the templates, you know, create dependencies, delete dependencies, you know, your Microsoft or Gantt chart type of way. And as I said, there are three versions of it now. If goes, someone goes, you know what? I don't like using that web interface. I would like to use my own Microsoft project, well, that's fine. So, and I will show you how this integrates and how it connect to an Excel or project or Jira, whatever the case might be, or SAP. So, um, let's get back to that. You wouldn't need to do this. Uh, I, I do it because I have a number of demo environments. Uh, but again, instead of um, using that web version, I can go literally using my Microsoft project I can open it from that one source of truth, um, the common data service. Uh, so what do we call it? Uh, Vic demo 164, there you go. And then use my desktop. So this is a representation of the three tactics in one place. You can either use an application that exists or 
integrate. And the same thing applies to every single place in the tool. So not only in the schedule, but everywhere. Uh, you name it, Excel, uh, uh, smart sheets, whatever. Now I'm gonna show you how this, this is done just quickly uh, because I did promise and I don't want to run out of time without showing you this. So this is where, by the way, this is the CDS. This is where everything lives. This is where the data is. And as you can see, it is accessible by the web. <clears throat> so the PMOs will have access to it themselves. It's not a, 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 a very, you know, SQL or whatever kind of a database entry where someone have to write some gibberish in order to get us to see the view of the, of the data. Um, but this is what so-called entities, forget about the technical details. Let's say that we, I want to see the product information. You can do the same thing for tasks, for uh, issues, risks, whatever. And you literally go, okay, what's this thought in my, um, in my CDS, the common data service? You literally click on a, uh, a button here called data and it will show you the data. So this is what been stored. Some data are missing, some are not. And literally you go there, this is how you then make sure that your service or the service connected to all data sources. Like right away, I can see, well, this project is missing some information. So if we are integrating, the integration is not working. Not only that, we can set refresh rates. You know, what's the acceptance level of refresh? Do you refresh it every, do you the expectation is the data refreshes every week, every month, every fortnight, and so on. But how do I create those connections? It is as simple as, and this is, as I promised, um, I, I, I will show you. You can have all sorts of connections. You know, like, um, we talk of hundreds of connections to known applications. So your, the one that I mentioned, your Excel, your Jira, your ServiceNow, your project, obviously, uh, Planner and Microsoft, uh, ServiceNow, you name it. These applications are all available, smart sheets. So I don't know if anyone wants to propose anything that I can, if you want to show me, uh, I'm, I'm, to, to show the connection, I'm open to it. Anyone wants me to integrate or I show you the integration method? I'm not going to do the integration uh, in one minute. Uh, but any suggestion in terms of a an application that you would think you would need to integrate or your organization would need to integrate to? Uh, no, no suggestions? All right, I will volunteer something. Are we sure no one wants to suggest an integration point? Uh, assuming that. No, nothing. All right. All right. Uh, I'll suggest, okay, um, smart sheets, for example. So let's say that I want to connect to smart sheets or project or I don't know, something. Literally, you go new connection. Uh, these are the list of all all sorts of connections. I mean, the list is, as I said, hundreds. There we go. There's a open list suggestion there. Jira, yep, we'll do Jira. Good suggestion. Um, so there you go. Uh, this is the list, and I'll show you Jira as being one of the list there. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That that's that's the list of um, almost almost everything you can think of uh, in terms of applications that an organization might have. So and and by the way, you know, it, it, Microsoft is adding to this list every single uh, I would dare to say week, but definitely every month. Um, so um, any new application that comes in under the sun, Microsoft will uh, put it here. Um, uh, existing ones and so on. So it's a very very comprehensive list of integration, uh, as you can see here. But let's go with Jira. So what do you do then? Again, I'm not going to finish the integration here. I'm just going to show you how easy it is. You go. I'm going to integrate with Jira. You you pick your uh, you you pick your connection. You say I'm getting connected to Jira. Oops. And then you enter your Jira instance, a username, and something called an API token. This is specific to Jira, by the way. Uh, so you ask your Jira administrator, what's the API token? They will give it to you, and you hit create. And once you create, it brings the data, uh, the fields from Jira, and compares the fields that you have in the CDS, and you just do the mapping. What's the start date for you? It's the start. What's the project name? It's project title and so on. And you do the mapping. Once you've done the mapping, and that will take, let's say, an hour, two hours, till you do all the mapping of the field and you do it once, and you go create, and that's it. The, the, the connection is established. You can start receiving and sending data from N2 Jira. Not that you want to send to Jira, usually you receive it from Jira, but that's how you create the connection. And again, this is something that you do all the time with all types of connections, not only just once, uh, you do it, you maintain the integration. Someone has 
create an Excel. You go, okay, I'm gonna to connect to that Excel. The only thing is that we ask that it's somewhere shared so we can have access to it. So that's the integration basically. Um, look, I'm gonna go through a number of things, but you know, you start doing your resource plans, you start your, doing your cost breakdown, for example. So this is important as well. This is where you uh, put your cost elements. I'm, I'm not gonna put the resource plan, I'm gonna just go my, put my cost elements. So this is where you go cost breakdown. You can bring your, if you, you, you had a resource plan, you can actually bring your cost elements from the resource plan or you create a new cost and you go, I don't know, contractor. And the type is labor, I don't know, so is, is a, we're gonna hire a BA, uh, it's gonna be a CapEx, you can put a, a markup. And then you go, I, I, my, I am forecasting that this BA will cost me and you, you put the estimate in here. Or it can come by the way from the resource plan. Uh, I didn't go through the resource plan, but. Uh, details here and you go yeah look i think it's going to start in march uh, they're going to cost us a thousand dollars a month and for three months let's say something like that. and then and so on so on and obviously once this get approved if you're using for example sap you enter the wbs code and you go this is a you know that number and then the budget approved budget and the actuals will come from sap to you so then again that's integration uh, uh with sap on the back end, done in, in, and maintained all the time. So project managers do not have to leave this one into place. Uh, they are estimating here and they're seeing the approved budget and the actuals come from that. Risk and issues uh, is there. So if you do the same thing, again, look, I'm not gonna go through all the details of different uh, aspects of project management, but the idea is that we are creating a one-stop shop, whether we are integrating or replacing. Uh, so again, the issues, the example that I've talked about, I can either use this application. Uh, so I, it's an application available within here. Same with, 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 the, um, uh, with the project uh, basically plan. Uh, so I can either type it in here and manage my risks and issues, assign it to people, escalate it or so on, or use Excel. And again, that's an integration exercise. Now, once I've done with all of these things and I entered the different information, I can literally generate my business case request the approval from the system that's the governance basically uh working so i go generate my business case it will you know take a bit of time it will generate it put it in my document area make it ready for approval a request and once that approval has happened um the project move into the next phase and the, con the story continues um, um happening i'm going to show you the approval request quickly and then i'll go back into how then we roll up all this information into uh, a, a number of uh, reports and dashboards. So that's been created in the shared document library. I can either click on the link or click on documents here. Same thing basically takes me to the document library. As you can see here, the business case has been generated. It merged the data, the information from uh, the, the, the system itself. So if I open this, uh, I'm going to open to the in the web instead of opening it in, a, um, in, in, in my desktop word. As you can see, the name of the of the um, project is here, and all the information that we entered will be here. Um, so that's merged from the system itself. I don't have to type in anything, no copy and paste. But also, I can then go and say, "Look, I would like it to be approved." And I go, "I want um, a certain person." I type in the name of the person. In fact, you don't have to if you want to automate that, so it will uh, bring the sponsor name or the line manager ma name directly to it. Uh, that's fine. So you go, yeah, I'm gonna create a, a new uh, request for an approval. Uh, and you can basically, in your workflow, uh, using something called Microsoft Automate, uh, you can um, apply or automate all your business processes, uh, procurement, uh, business case approval, uh, RFIs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it it's, it's very sophisticated and it's easy to maintain. Uh, please approve or review my business case. Uh, and run the flow. So I would receive an email. Um, in the email itself, there will be a link to this document. So I can click on it, review it. I can put comments, so on and so forth. And then from the email itself, I can approve or reject the business case uh, submitted to me. So look, this is the bottom up. I will quickly show you the top down. So the top down, this is how then all the information will be rolled up, not by anyone. No one is copying and pasting data from that one place that you, should, you have seen. In fact, sorry. Just before I get into the, the top down, I'll quickly show you the other version. I promise that I'll show you the other version of it in the Power Platform. 
which we recommend. So basically it's a similar thing. So our every line item here is a project. Um, uh, the, 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 the different projects will have, you know, this is CapEx, this is Capital Works, not IT, um, but obviously we, it can be applied to, to both. You click on the project name, you drill into the project, same principle, there will be a, a workflow at the top because you are in the proposal stage, uh, different tabs, uh, you know, you know how we talked about the project brief and the cost estimation, the resource plans and all of this stuff. It's similar, very, very similar, um, but uh, with the tactics available, we recommend this platform actually in a set of SharePoint for different reasons. Um, one of the reasons that you can actually create other applications that are inter interact with it, for example, uh, your budget approval. This is where we talk about uh, annual, you know, budget approval and selecting and optimally putting a project in a certain year. So you go, okay, for this year, we're going to do this. This is the cost estimation and if they approve the draft. What was the original budget and SAP? So you can create multiple, multiple ways of doing, uh, interacting with uh, bulk data like projects or risks or issues or whether it can be contracts. I can do your own cost estimation in a different um, setup. So you can, uh, this is a cost estimation. You can, uh, you know, create a very Excel-like experiences for different functions and make it a richer experience for the user uh, all the way to a mobile or a site, uh, sorry, mobile application. So for example, this is a, a site inspection um, uh, uh, application on people's phones and tablets and uh, it supports all types of operating system, iOS, Android, whatever it is, where people can take pictures and so on. So again, it's available on SharePoint or Power Platform. We recommend the Power Platform, but it's at the end, it's your choice. Um, right, and then because of all this integration replace and PMO physics Park solution, you get the top down. And that's really where the, the mandate is, but without having going through this for the last, I promise, 45, I've now 55 minutes. Um, going through all of that kind of a, a, a bottom up just to really get that benefit. But it's important because otherwise you have a pretty picture in terms of a dashboard, but no one uses it. Uh, it no one trusts, it, trusts the report. Uh, no one comes to it. Anyway, um, so again, this dashboard is not updated by anyone. And the data comes directly from that CDS that I showed you where all the data is stored. Uh, for example, it says you have 72 projects, 143 uh, people. Uh, 11 active issues, 48 active risks, and so on. You can configure and customize this the way you want. It comes with drilling ability. So you click in this part, kind of donut, and it shows you the list of those 70 something projects. Uh, and then you can again filter. So uh, 72 projects, we have a cost variance of 1.8 million, i.e., we're going to be forecasting to overspend by 1.8 million. And you go, okay, well, I want to focus on project and the execution phase, give you a list of the project and the execution phase. And nine of them, almost half a million, will be over budget. And then you, for example, spot this project. Um, and you go, okay, it's read all the cross in terms of schedule, work, and cost. Why? Then you go run the status for this project. And again, click on it, and it will bring that project, the same project, the red the description, the comments from the project manager, the milestone that are delayed and why, uh, the, the risks, the issues, all into one place, and then linked to the bottom-up operating tool. So if you click on project schedule, that will take me back to the same interface the project manager is interacting with. So as a person, as an exec, as a person who's interacting with the report, I'm not just seeing pretty pictures. I can go all the way to the source of the data without having to go to people and the administrators and ask them, okay, can you ask the project manager to send us the file about their project schedule? So can I see what's happening? Not that I, as an exec, uh, exec might actually interrogate the schedule in details, but Basically, that gap that we talked about between operating tools and reporting tools completely disappeared. And look, there's a numerous number of, of, um, of reports. This one, for example, takes about, talks about financial control. You know, the, 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 the curves here become as forecast, budget, and actual, not only from this PMO365 solution, but obviously through the integration tactic with applications like SAP Oracle. I can go, look, I want to see what is my CapEx looks like for labor, for material, whatever. And obviously the curve will be changing, showing us. It tells me how many projects without budget or without um, actuals. I can focus on a certain project or a couple of projects as I wanted to uh, update the, the view and so on. This is a, 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 a Victorian um, Department of Education, for example, one of the dashboards. 
Um, it basically goes and show me the, the jobs that are being maintained or different schools. I can, and then I go, okay, this period of time, what schools, or what jobs have been done in which schools? Uh, so I can narrow down my view and that's a GIS. I can then point into the, the, the school and give me a bit of information about it. I can say, look, I want the, the schools that have stru structural work being done on them and so on. So I can you know, really filter the information the way I want all the way to the actual report done by the contractor. So I go, look, um, I want to see, all right, I, I filtering but based on storm event, and I can see, well, there's a work in this school and work in this school. This is school is this name, click on it, um, and let me see the latest report generated by the contractor, click on it. And that, again, that even report is not filled out by anyone. They want using, if you remember that side diary app on their tablet, went on the, the sites, took some pictures, fill in some text, and I have the report from side delivered to me on my um, tool, on my report. And so that's kind of a, a top-down control and visibility that we are talking about. Uh, look, I promise to open it for Q&A. So if you have time um, uh, and have questions or things you would like to see, uh, happy to open up for a Q&A for maybe five, 10 minutes. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for attending the webinar. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, if you're, oh, I'm pretty sure, uh, if you are interested to uh, learn more or, or, or understand more about the application, we will be more than happy to uh, talk to you directly. Right, so let me go through the questions and see if I have any questions. No, nothing here, nothing here. Okay. I'll give it a, another maybe two minutes. See if anyone has any questions, any interest in any areas that I didn't demonstrate. All right, I think we have a question here. Oh, thank you. All right, doesn't seem that we have any questions. Um, all right, everyone have a good day. Hope that you, um, Again, uh, I've uh, seen this is uh, this has been useful to you. And again, please reach out if you uh, require any further information. Cheers.